do with my hands when people are singing happy birthday to me, but thank you all very much. <laughs> I wondered if Margaret was going to do something.
Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Corey Alexander Ouellette, and it is my joy to be the pastor here at St. B. A few announcements this morning. First is that the UMW Day Circle will be meeting this Tuesday morning at 1030 on July on June 14th. I'm already trying to be in July. On June 14th. Also this week, in Tennessee Western Kentucky Annual Conference will be meeting at Brentwood United Methodist Church Wednesday through Friday. I am being ordained at conference this year on Thursday, June 16th at 7 o'clock. If you are unable or if you are unable to travel to Brentwood United Methodist for the service, we will be having it live. We will be live streaming it here in the sanctuary if you would like to come and watch that service. It starts at 7 o'clock. It is about a two hour long service where, because it is truly a remarkable service to attend as well. It is full of liturgy and scripture, and I will be ordained along with 12 others. We have 14 being commissioned, and I don't have the number of first-time licensed local pastors in my head, but we see all of the people who have been called to serve in this conference uh, for the first time of many. So if you, I highly encourage you to come and watch that service, uh, or you're also more than welcome to attend at Brentwood United Methodist. Next week is Father's Day, so we will be celebrating our fathers and father figures next Sunday. We will also be having a reception after church to celebrate my ordination. The fathers will also get a token of, their, of gratitude at that reception. We are not forgetting about you, I promise. Anne's Closet is in need of spaghetti sauce, spaghetti noodles, and macaroni and cheese. If you are able to provide those donations, they are very much appreciated. Also, July 4th is only a few weeks away, and we will be having a July 4th celebration on the 4th here in the, by the, in the back parking lot. We will have a cookout. You are invited to bring your favorite dessert and fireworks. We will start around 6 o'clock and the fireworks will start when it gets dark. Also, it is hard to believe that we're already thinking about back to school because it feels like school just ended, but we'll be having a back to school bash on August 6th and so we are starting to look for donations and volunteers for that and so if you are interested in donating or volunteering for that, uh, please let the office know. Also, please fill out the attendance pad found at the end of your pew so that we know that you worshiped with us today. Are there any other announcements this morning? Most importantly, I want you to know that whether this is your first time or you have been attending for years, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. And I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. From the very whisper of creation, God poured forth love. Praise be to God for the blessings of God's love. In the fullness of time, God sent Jesus as a revelation of God's own self. When we thought all hope was lost, God offered the Holy Spirit to heal and guide us. For the Trinity of Understanding, we sing praise. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 92, For the Beauty of the Earth.
please remain standing as we affirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. call to us. We are sometimes overwhelmed by the thought of your compassionate care. Open our hearts this day to hear and respond in joy to your call, that we may serve you faithfully all of our days. Amen. You may remain seated as we sing together hymn number 85, We Believe in One True God. scriptures this morning is coming from John 16, 12 through 15. So if you will please stand as we read the gospel. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify, glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. And that the Father 
as is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Uh, words of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. This morning is Trinity Sunday, which I'm going to be honest with you. I am not going to preach a sermon that is going to make us all magically understand exactly how the Trinity works, because that is not possible. <laughs> but we are going to explore the inner workings of the Trinity. And this passage from John gives us a way to understand the Trinity as a manifestation of God's love, a way of opening a door to the mystery of God that allows us to see ourselves embraced by it. In order to more fully understand this brief passage from John, we need to look more broadly at chapters 13 through 17. In these five chapters, love is the overarching theme of comfort and instruction that Jesus shares with his friends on the night of his arrest. John 13 begins with a reference to Jesus' love for his own to the end and builds to the threefold commandment of love. Love is linked to the giving of the Spirit in John 14. The vine, vine grower, branches metaphor of John 15 is interpreted as love, as Jesus' unity with the Father throughout John has been understood to be love, and as the sending of the Son is because God so loved the world. Those who believe in Jesus are explicitly drawn into the love of Father and Son and the prayer of John 17, so that the divine love story with the world can be made manifest in them. So then this passage this morning for Trinity Sunday invites us to draw all of that together. When attempting to understand the Trinity, I often find myself with more questions than answers, which really just feels like a theme on my personal faith journey, that I always just have more questions than answers. I do take comfort in the fact that my questions join a long line of people who have asked questions about God. Moses certainly wanted to know who God was in Exodus 3 when he said, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? How do we know God? Who is this God who has called us? While we don't find all the answers to our questions, at least not yet, we do find glimpses of God as we explore the ways in which the Trinity is rooted in love and draws us together as we attempt to embody that love. We find the ways in which Jesus moves through the Spirit to us and from Jesus back to the one who sent him and continuously points us back to eternal love. I will admit that the beginning of this text feels a little bit like Jesus is saying to us, I'll tell you when you're older. When I was in seminary, my church history professor was walking us through all of the different councils that met in the 300s and before and after to try to figure out 
the doctrines of Christian theology. As he was explaining the debates about the Trinity and why they were actually heresy, he said, we can know God truly, but not fully. What we know about God is indeed true. And also, we do not and cannot know the fullness of God. At least not yet. The Trinity will tell us when we're older, when we feast at Christ's heavenly banquet, when we get to ask the laundry list of questions we have been patiently waiting to ask. But what are we supposed to do in the meantime? What are we supposed to do as we continue to live with more questions than answers? How are we supposed to live into who God has called us to be when there are things about God we inherently cannot yet know? The Gospel of John gives us an answer, though not necessarily an easy one. We live lives that have been rooted in love for God, for Christ, for the Holy Spirit, for our enemy and our friend, for our community and our world, for ourselves. And the Holy Trinity models for us the reminder that we do not exist apart from one another. Community and interconnectedness are at the root of the Trinity and at the root of our faith. In her book, God for Us, Catherine Mowry Lacuna writes, the Trinity is ultimately a practical doctrine with radical consequences for Christian life. It is the, it is the specifically Christian way of speaking about God and what it means to participate in the life of God through Jesus Christ in the Spirit. We are participating in the life of God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit when we embody the example that Christ has set before us. It is difficult for us to admit that there are things we don't know, particularly about something that is so central to our beings. But the reality is that we do know God truly because God did become fully human in Christ Jesus. And it's okay to not know things. It's okay that we cannot fully comprehend who God is. I've always been a little bit intimidated by outer space and the idea of outer space. I've also been a little bit intimidated by the fact that according to National Geographic, we have only explored roughly 20% of the oceans on the earth, meaning 80% is still left undiscovered. There is so much unknown in our world and in our universe. There is so much of this world and universe still to be learned. So much so that we can never learn every single thing about it. As it is with God. There is so much for us to learn about God and about who God is in our lives. Some of it we will never fully understand. But there are things we do understand. We understand love. We understand community. We understand that we are indeed in this together. We understand the love of 
the love God has for us that is found within the Godhead, three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We understand that that love is a model for us to live into as we love our neighbor as ourselves. And the rest, well, we'll keep making a list of questions for God to answer when we feast at Christ's heavenly banquet. When we live in the example set before us by the Trinity, we begin to grow in our understanding of the importance of mutuality between the Godhead and our mutuality with one another. As we are reminded that we do exist for and with each other. John's Gospel presents the Trinity as a way of understanding God for, with, and in us and of understanding ourselves for, with, and in God. As daughters and sons who have seen what it means to be children of God in Christ Jesus. Through Jesus' example, teaching, and love, we are made to understand and to rejoice in God's love for us and to learn to love one another as neighbors dwelling close to the heart of God, with the Son in the unity of love. And when we do this, we show the world, in loving words and works, that it is also beloved by embodying God's love for it. And meanwhile, the Spirit is always with us guiding us on the way of love, creating space for us and in us to be participants in the Holy Trinity. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. At this time, I invite our ushers forward for this morning's offering. Let us pray. O oh God, pour your spirit out upon these our gifts, gifts that are used to embody your love in the world and spread your kingdom on earth. Bless them, multiply them, humble us to give back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
As we come to our time of prayer this morning, our prayer list can be found on the back of the bulletin. We also want to lift up Reverend Pat Frudenthal, our district superintendent. Her mother passed away this past Friday, and so we lift her and her family up in prayer this morning. Are there other joys or concerns we would like to share this morning? We want to lift up Judy Schaefer. She has been in the hospital for several weeks in Murfreesboro, but is home now and continue, is doing better, but continues to need our prayers. Are there any others? Seeing none, let us go to God in prayer. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for this day, for the ability and opportunity to gather once more to be reminded of community and love. Oh God, we lift up to you all of our prayer. Prayers in the midst of grief. Prayers in the midst of healing. Prayers in the midst of celebration and joy. Oh God, you have searched our hearts and fully know us. You have heard our prayers even before we have spoken them aloud. You have poured your strength and spirit upon us. giving us the strength to be your hands and feet in the world. Giving us the courage to embody your deep love. Oh God, you are also with us when we fall short of living into who you have called us to be. You are with us when we do not fully embody your love. And no matter what, you offer us forgiveness and grace and peace. Oh God, you are with us in this space, continuously revealing yourself to us so that we may truly know who you are as we more fully discover who we are within you. Oh God, we give you thanks for your continuous revelation and love and grace and peace and joy. May we live bold lives inspired by each. And now we pray together as your beloved children the prayer that Jesus first taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the close of our service this morning, I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together, O Spirit of the Living God, hymn number 539. understand everything and that's okay because we continue to learn and grow and experience the love of God as God reveals God's self to us in the Trinity and as God reveals God's self to us in one another we are interconnected we are one on this journey and so go in peace in the name of the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer.